Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. In today's video, we will have a look at a very interesting classical cipher, namely the affine cipher. And the affine cipher is based on mathematical simple constructs like multiplication and addition. I structured the video into six different parts. In the first part, I give you a short introduction to the affine cipher. Then we will have a look at the additive cipher, the multiplicative cipher, and finally the affine cipher. After that, we compute the key space size and unicity distance. And finally, we will do it in Crypt 2. We will encrypt and decrypt using an affine cipher component. The affine cipher is a type of monoalphabetic substitution cipher. While the exact origin date of this cipher is unclear, monoalphabetic ciphers in general have roots in ancient civilizations, for instance, the Caesar cipher. Over time, simple substitution ciphers evolved with the inclusion of mathematical concepts, finally leading to the affine cipher. And the affine cipher is a combination of an additive cipher and a multiplicative cipher. But as you will see, it's still a simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher, meaning every plain text letter is encrypted to the same ciphertext letter. And all in this video shown ciphers work on the Latin alphabet, so we have 26 letters. And since these ciphers compute with numbers, we have to map letters to numbers and back. Here we have the Latin alphabet A, B, C and so on until Z. And the A is mapped to 0, the B to 1, the C to 2, and so on and so forth, until the Z is mapped to 25. First, let's have a look at an additive cipher. An additive cipher adds an offset number to the letter. This shifts the letter by this number to the right. You probably know this as a Caesar cipher. The key is a shift value B. What does it mean when we shift a letter? Let's assume our plain text letter is A and we have a shift by 3, then A becomes B, C, D, so we encrypt A with D and so on. We can express this also with mathematical equations. For encryption, our ciphertext letter is equal to our plain text letter plus the shift value B mod 26. And the decryption is the inverse. We take our Ciphertext letter, subtract our shift value mod 26, and we obtain our plain text letter. Here is an example with our shift value b equal to 5. Our plain text is hello world. Hello world is converted to numbers here 7, 4, 11, 11, and so on. And to compute our ciphertext here, we take, for instance, our first plain text letter, we add 5, and we get 12. With 4, we add 5, we get 9 and so on and so forth. And then when we have our ciphertext numbers, we convert again these back to letters. We get M, J, Q, Q, T, B, T, W, Q, I. And you can see here that same letters like the L are encrypted using the same ciphertext letters. This is a monoalphabetic or a simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher. Now let's have a look at the multiplicative cipher. A multiplicative cipher multiplies a letter with a number. This randomly selects a letter of the alphabet. What do I mean with randomly? It's not as easy as with a shift cipher. We jump using this construction in our alphabet. This I mean with randomly. And this is also a simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher, as we will see. The key of the multiplicative cipher is our multiplication value a, and there must exist an inverse a to the power of minus 1. If we don't have an inverse, we cannot encrypt. When does such an inverse exist? An inverse of a number a exists when a and 26 here, the mod value, are co-prime. Here are also equations which can be used to express this cipher. Our encryption works as follows. Our ciphertext letter is our plain text letter multiplied, multiplied with a mod 26. And our decryption is our ciphertext letter multiplied with the inverse of a mod 26. Here's also an example with a equal to 5, which means our inverse of a is 21. We first again convert our plain text here, hello world, to numbers. 
And then we use these equations here. We multiply 7 with 5, this is 35, and when we take mod 26, we get 9. We compute 4 multiplied with 5, this is 20, and we go on and on and on. And then when we have our ciphertext letters here, we can, uh, or numbers here, we can convert these to letters. Our final ciphertext then is J U D D S G S H D P. And as you can see here, same letters are encrypted. Here's the same L's here are encrypted to D's. So this is a simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher. And here's a hint. The inverse of a number in modular arithmetic can be computed using methods such as the extended Euclidean algorithm. This algorithm will be covered in a future video. So stay tuned for that. Finally, we will have a look at the affine cipher. And the affine cipher is a combination of the shown additive and the shown multiplicative cipher. Now we have more or less two keys, the multiplication value A and the shift value B. These together are the key. We also have equations. To encrypt, we first multiply our plain text letter with our multiplication value A, and then we add the B and compute mod 26. To reverse this, we first have to, from our ciphertext letter, or the number of the ciphertext letter, subtract the B again, and then we have to multiply the result with the inverse of A. Here's an example with a equals to 5, which again means a to the power of minus 1, the inverse is 21, and b equal to 5. We again first convert our plain text to numbers, and then we compute here 7 multiplied with 5 plus 5 mod 26, we get 14, and so on and so forth. We get these numbers here. And then we convert the numbers to our ciphertext. O, Z, I, I, X, L, X, M, I, U. And as you can see again, this is still a simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher. Our L's are still encrypted to the same ciphertext letters. The O's here are still encrypted to the same ciphertext letter. And so on. Now let's have a look at the key space size and unicity distance of the affine size. We have 25 possible values for A and 26 possible values for B. Remember, we convert our letters to numbers and we have 26 letters. But the A is converted to zero. And if we multiply with zero, we have not a valid encryption and decryption. So we can only take one up to 25 for A, not the zero. But for B, it is possible if we just add zero, we basically remove the B and this is still valid. So we can encrypt and decrypt. This is why B has one possible value more than A. But A and 26 have to be co-prime, remember? Otherwise, we won't have an inverse number for A. So only these following values are valid for A. Otherwise, we have no inverse element A to the power of minus one. And this is 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 15, 17, 19, 21, 23, and 25. All these numbers are co-prime with 26. And these are 12 values. So our key space size is 12 multiplied 26, which is 312. Our key space size is key is 312. And now let's compute the unicity distance. Remember, the unicity distance is a minimum number of ciphertext that we need when we perform crypt analysis, that it is possible that we only obtain one valid solution. If we are below the unicity distance, we can create different plain texts that we that we cannot distinguish. So we had would have different possible plain text values. But if we have a ciphertext with unicity distance, we can find a single valid solution. To compute the unicity distance, we divide the entropy of the key space by the redundancy of the language. The entropy of the key space is log 2 of 312, and the redundancy of the English language is 3.2. If we compute this, we get 2.581, about this number here. And since we don't have half or quarter or fractional letters, we have to round this number up. So our unicity distance is 3. So we need at a minimum three letters for cryptanalysis to obtain only a single valid solution. 
Now that we know how the affine cipher works, let's encrypt and decrypt using the affine cipher component of Cryptool 2. I'm here now in the start center of Cryptool 2. I use a nightly build 9679.1 and you also need this if you want to work with the affine cipher. To create a new workspace, I click here and I get a new workspace. Now let's search for the affine cipher in our component list. And I want to encrypt and decrypt, so I put two components on the workspace. We need some text inputs. I need a text input here for our message. This is hello world. I connect the plain text here. Let's name this plain text with the first component and then this with the second component. Then I enter an alphabet. I have uppercase letters here. So alphabet. I enter an alphabet from A to Z. And I connect the alphabet with both components. Now I want to see the ciphertext. So I need a text output for the ciphertext here. And I just copy the component for the decrypted plain text. To provide the keys, remember we need A for multiplication and B for addition, we have two choices. We can connect external number inputs for A and B here. But if we don't connect these, we can just set these as a setting. We set A to 5 and B to 5 and the same in the second component. And I change the second component to decryption. When we now start the workspace, you can see that we get our same ciphertext that I have shown you in the slides. And clearly, when we decrypt using a wrong or a different number here, and it's also a wrong key, this won't work in the way we would like. We, get, we won't get our plain text. Yeah, and this component is really powerful. So at first, when you enter an A value for the multiplication that is not co-prime with the length of our alphabet, let's change this to six here, you will get an error message. You can open it and then you see the number six has no inverse element when calculating with modulo m equal to 26. And we either have to change our alphabet, this changes our modular value, or we have to change our a value. But we can also add here additional alphabet letters. Let's add, for instance, lowercase. And now, when we start it again, you can see that we also have here lowercase letters in our alphabets. And we can now encrypt hello world lowercase. And here we have the same. So we have decrypt and encrypt. A5, B5 and a5 and B5. And encryption and decryption still works. I just wonder why the component now has a problem with uppercase and lowercase here. This should work without any problem. But let's see. Let's add some digits. This also makes problems. Encrypt A5, B5. A5, B5, decrypt. Ah, we... <laughs> We have to change it to case sensitive here. I forgot. Now it should work. Yeah. We have to tell it that it's case sensitive. Otherwise, the component will change our ciphertext all to uppercase letters and then it won't work. And as you can see here, I added also digits. This also works. So if we enter here digits, these digits are also encrypted and also decrypted. Yeah, and this is everything I wanted to show you in this short video. You learned what is an additive cipher and what is a multiplicative cipher. You learned what is the affine cipher. You saw its um, key space size computation and unicity distance computation. Yeah, and now you also saw how you can create a workspace in Crypto 2 to use a cipher.
I hope you like this video. If yes, please, please give a thumbs up. This really helps me to grow the channel to make crypto more popular. Also, if you did not yet subscribe to this channel, please do so. This also really helps me. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.